Greetings, and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Light as a Feather Season 1, the review. Light as a Feather is one of my favorite shows on Hulu. It was one of those awesomeness shows. Um, that was kind of like this little programming for like a lot of um, online people and new coming acting people where they had their own shows and stuff like that. Not sure if it's still around. But Light as a Feather lasted for two seasons, sadly. But it's a really good spooky show, especially around for the Halloween time. Now, I've already discussed episodes one and two, so I'm not really going to go over that again. I'll just give you a quick um, synopsis and then I'll go into the rest of the season. Basically what it is, is a group of like really close friends. They befriend this new girl named Violet. They play a game in the cemetery called Light as a Feather, Stuff as a Board. And then in this version, it predicts like how you're going to die. The girls don't really believe it until one of the girls actually dies exactly how Violet predicted. Now the girls all worry. Now you're all caught up. This show came out in 2018 and is based off a book called Lights of Feather Stiff as a Board that came out in 2013 by um, Zoe Arson. And like, she wrote two other books and she wrote two other books after this show got canceled. The second one was Light as a Feather, um, Cold as Marble. And that's the sequel to the first book. And then she wrote another one in 2020 called Light as a Feather, Silent as a Grave. And those two last books don't have nothing to do with the TV show. But the um, TV show itself is based off of the first book, but it makes a lot of changes. I will get into those changes at the end of this video. Some people prefer the book, others prefer the TV show, some like both. I've never read the book, I just read like the synopsis and uh, like a couple of like entries here and there. But yeah, this was a really cool show. I think the reason why it got canceled in the second season is that even though the second season is good, like it's good, they introduced another type of horror genre element into it which was kind of like the revenge slasher thing. And that totally goes against like the book, <laughs> the TV show. How do you go from like a supernatural, um, almost demonic type show to that, uh, where you still had that in the second season, but you introduced a revenge slasher type thing. And I mean, it was good what they wrote, but it was just like, and it, it built to the story. That's the cool thing about it. Like it, it added on to the story of what happened in like say the first season. But why why deviate? And by deviating, it kind of like they they lost their core audience. Then people started complaining, and then you know it took a long time because like they split that season in half. It's a lot longer than season one, and they split it in half. And when they had to, the, Hulu's been doing that a lot lately. A lot of shows been doing that a lot lately. And so when they split it, it took a long time for it to come back. And a lot of people forgot what happened in the first half of the second season. Then, and then they lost interest and stuff. They gotta stop doing that crap. And so like, and then, you know, and that's what helped cause it to get canceled. Cause for the longest time it was on the chopping block and nobody knew if it was going to get canceled or not. And then it finally did. And it's like, oh man. <laughs> So yeah, let's get into like the rest of these episodes because the first season's only 10 episodes. So the girls are all shooken up by Olivia's like sudden death. And you know, Alex, she was kind of suspecting that Olivia might die. So she started like researching it on the internet. But now in the third episode, she no longer wants to believe that this whole game they played is real and Violet is some type of witch. But McKenna is like totally freaking out and she thinks that Violet has something to do with it. Especially after she calls Trey. She calls Trey because, you know, he was in the car crash too. And he, um, so she calls him up and because she, she doesn't like him no more. Like they haven't been friends in forever. But then, like, she calls him up and talking about, oh, you know, I'm sorry to hear you in an accident and I need to talk to you. So basically, she has a hidden agenda. <laughs> it's more than just she feels sorry that he was in this car accident. And then, so, 
when they talk, you know, he's a little niff by that. But then he tells her straight up, like Olivia was freaking out when he was driving because the exact same song that Violet said that was going to come on before the crash came on. And that the exact same way. So Olivia was trying to like grab onto the wheel, make him stop the car, and then boom, they got into an accident. And Olivia died with a severed arm. And so McKenna's all like, well, that's exactly how Violet said that was going to happen. So Violet is, so McKenna is really like starting to like fear Violet now. And when she tells other girls, Alex don't want to hear it, but Candace kind of does. Candace still to this point does not like Violet. She just has it like out for her. And so like... The girls were talking about doing like a GoFundMe page for Olivia. Well, in sneaks up Violet and she overhears it and she's all like, I want to be a part of that too. And the girls are kind of like, um, you know, you didn't really know her that well. And, you know, we're closer to her. So, you know, then next thing you know, Violet goes behind their back and starts the GoFundMe page and funds a little bit, um, a whole lot of it herself. And so the girls are now like just furious, especially Candace. Candace is pissed. <laughs> now things get worse when they actually go to the funeral. When the girls see Violet show up, they're like really upset because they still think she has something to do with Olivia's death. However, McKenna is starting to freak out when she's at the funeral. When she looks at um, Olivia's body in the casket, all she can see is Jenny. And so like her twin sister. And, t and Jenny's all looking like a corpse, but she looks kind of almost like a burnt corpse. And there's a reason for that. I'll get into that at the end of this um, episode. I mean, in this video, I mean. So she runs out, freaked out, and like Henry trying to like console her and everything. And Henry's having a hard time as he's giving a eulogy and stuff. And so Henry has decided he's not going back to college. He just can't after his sister's death. So he's going to take up a teaching position, like a coach assistant at the high school the um weeping willow high school i can't believe the arthur <laughs> name did that i mean that's like such an rl stein thing to do that's awesome <laughs> candace is having a hard time especially with olivia's death because that was her actual best friend amongst the group even though apparently candace has some problems with her we find out what those problems are which is basically one-sided so she goes to Isaac and she's all like, you know, Isaac, I just can't deal with this. My best friend died hating my guts. And he's all like, I'm sure she didn't like hate you. And then she plays him the audio recording that Olivia left on the voicemail. So he's just like, you know, whatever. I just don't want to do nothing. And she's trying to hug him. She's trying to like kiss him. And, he, and he's like, look, I just don't want nothing to do with you no more. Just leave me alone. He has completely blown her off. And it's really upsetting to her. And it's just like, you know, it's kind of like, I guess, because he feels guilty for what his part was. Because, you know, he was dating Olivia for the longest time. And then next thing you know, he's over here making out with her best friend and she catches them and then she dies. So he's dealing with this in his own way, in a weird guyish kind of way. So when it comes to Candace, we find out why she has so much animosity towards Olivia. Like I said before, Olivia is the rich girl. Candace is not. Now, it turns out that at some point in time in school, kids were making fun of Candace, calling her um, like, I think like coat rack Candace or like, no, Clarence Candace or something like that because she has to like buy a lot of cheaper stuff. And Olivia overheard that and got pissed at the kids making fun of them. So Olivia let them have it and made sure nobody was ever going to like mess with Candace again. And so because of that, for some backwards reason, Candace now has animosity towards Olivia, you know, their best friend, and feels like she lives in her shadow because Olivia is rich and she is not. But Olivia literally defended her and stood up for her. So I don't understand why Candace felt that way. It's so strange and bizarre. Like, I actually thought Olivia actually did something to her, but no. So it makes Candace just look crappy now, you know? Also with Candace, she decides she's going to run for student body president. 
and um, student council thing. I think Olivia was originally going to do it, but now she can't. So um, Candace is going to do it. And Candy really, really wants to do it. But Violet wants to do it too. <laughs> and as you know, Candace hates Violet. <laughs> so when they're like supposed to have like the debate, they uh, was in the room with the camera and Violet decides she's going to turn the camera on and broadcast it towards the entire school. And so Candace has no idea. And she's just laying it into Violet, talking about how fake she is. She's weird. She's some kind of witch, stuff like that. And Violet's all like, well, at least I didn't make out with my dead best friend's boyfriend <laughs> and everything. And then McKenna sees this because it broadcasts on video for the whole school to see. So McKenna's just like running as fast as she can. And she tells like Candace, stop talking because you're being recorded. And then so Candace is all like, you set me up, telling the Violet. And Violet's like, I have no idea. I don't even know how to work this machine. Y'all have to believe me. And so they, uh, so Candace and McKenna just leave. Violet is bad. Now it's, it's more interesting when you find out what happened in the book with this scene, because it's a little altered here and there. But nevertheless, it's still <laughs> interesting. So we know Violet is truly up to something and she's causing a rift amongst the friends. Speaking of Isaac, he is upset with the whole Olivia thing to the point where he just can't deal with life no more. So he calls one of those little teen hotline things, right? And guess who answers the phone doing the teen hotline thing? Violet. And so like he tells her, you know, he, he did something terrible to his girlfriend before she died with the best friend and he just can't deal with it. And Violet's all like, you know, he doesn't tell her his name and she's all like you know you can tell me whatever you want and we can even like hang out if you want and then she says my name is Violet and then it ends and the theme the, the, the soundtrack for this show is amazing I love the music to this show so as a result of this when the girls are all hanging out they see Violet and Isaac walking side by side almost like they're holding hands this really infuriates Candace because she's just kind of like dude what the heck like you've been like making out with me for like you know for a period of time and now you ditch me for like the new girl and the new girl's like evil and stuff so she is not at all happy with violet it just gets worse after that and so we find out what candace's premonition was about she is gonna drown and so like you know that's yeah <laughs> she's gonna drown i gotta say that's, that's kind of such a cliche stereotypical thing it's like hey, look okay in the books candace is white and with blonde hair but they race bent her for the show so um i get why she wrote that for the book but for the tv show for the black girl to drown and and it's, it's such a stereotype for black people have a fear of water and swimming because a lot of black people can't swim which is not so much a stereotype because stereotypes are based on fiction not fiction but on fact and everything a lot of black people do hate the water like me i can't swim i hate going on the water and stuff i mean yeah i used to hang out in the pool and hang out in the ocean and stuff but you know, I could never swim and I put my head on the water for a couple of seconds. That's all I can do. You know, I think one time I almost drowned. I think I went to the bottom of the pool one time and somehow I floated myself back up when I was really little anyway. So like, yeah, it's just, <laughs> if they were going to have like, like, okay, if they wanted to race bent a character, they should have race bent somebody else and then gave like the white girl or some other girl, like the drowning premonition. Cause it's just like the black people and the fear of water. It's like, oh man, come on now. <laughs> now when it comes to Violet throughout the series or the first season, we see something's happening with her. Her hair is falling out. We see like um bugs coming like from her ear and her mouth when she eats stuff her fingernail oh the fingernail scene was so gross and, like she's playing with it like trying to see what's wrong with it and it wiggles off kind of it's like oh man you know what i'm saying and that thing on her back but i don't think they stated what it's called yet in this season uh if they did i couldn't hear it but I know they talk about it in the second season. It's called um, Chrysalis and everything. It's like this strange growth demonic thing. 
it is now bleeding from her back and it's getting bigger much bigger much veinier much yuckier and stuff but there's so much like there's like um a couple of other demonic stuff happening on in this season like it, it is is brief but it's subtle and it's eerie like when mckenna and henry they're now kind of like an item they're kissing and they're driving as they're driving birds start to fly into their windshield and just like splat and there's blood like all over the windshield it's gross and it's creepy every time the girls eat something there'll be like worms or roaches or some type of bugs coming from like their food and stuff with candace it was the apple and she bit into it and then she looked and she saw like worms coming from like maggots and stuff then mckenna she ate like her sandwich and then she left and then it noticed that there are bugs coming from that too and it's kind of like whoa what is going on and stuff and but the the, the 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 supernatural stuff is very subtle i wish they would have built it up a lot stronger if they would have built it up a lot stronger then maybe this could have lasted a whole more than just two seasons so the thing with Isaac and Candace is getting worse to where he really doesn't want nothing to do with her. She's almost to the point where she's becoming like a little clingy stalker and everything. And so like, um, what is it? Um, when they're at something, they go, oh, they try to find out who's going to be the new student body president. So she goes to sit next to him. He gets up and moves away from her and goes sits by Violet. <laughs> this really irks her. <laughs> but what gets her even more irked is when she finds out that Violet became the new president. And then so she goes over to Candace to give her a hug. And Candace whispers in her ear, I know you killed the living. I know you're some kind of like witch or something like that. And I'm going to help to burn you down. So Violet makes a whole scene talking about why did you threaten me? She just threatened me. And then Candace loses it she loses it badly and she screams out and shouts to the whole class like she's a witch she's evil she killed olivia and all this other stuff and then she's just acting historically as people are like trying to like you know calm her behind down so violet is getting everything that she wants she's causing dissension within the group but it gets worse for Candace after that. Now, I'll get into the other characters later. Let me get full again into this whole Candace thing. But actually, I'll get into the other characters for now. So, we now find out why McKenna doesn't like Trey. See, Trey, he's not, he is a drug dealer, but not you know, the hard kind of drugs. He has ADD medicine, and he sells that. And he sold some to, like, Jenny and Jenny has a bad heart condition so she died from a pill like overdose and her heart like a heart attack she died of a heart attack at like age 15. now this is different from the book like I said I'll get into that at the end of this video so that is why like McKenna hates his behind but we find out it wasn't him that gave Jenny the pills that caused the heart attack Oh yeah, see, Alex and Violet were like in shop class and everything's going like terribly for Alex and she's upset and Violet's trying to do the nice girl thing and she doesn't want Violet to do the nice girl thing. So then she gets so stressed out that she starts popping pills and everything. Violet goes to her purse and sees the big pill bottle. So Violet sets her up when she's in dance class oh did i mention chachi's um is in like this show it's just brief it's small she's a supporting character that's about it so when they had dance rehearsal all of a sudden violet is there watching from like afar and then so alex is like about to leave so as alex is about to leave she grabs her bag and then the pill bottle comes out and it spills pills everywhere. Somebody had loosened the top. It was Violet. There are pills all over the floor. Her coach, who got sassed by Alice in the last episode, she is furious. So, Alice is in some big doo-doo. <laughs> She's in trouble with her parents. She's not going to get a spell, but she is like in some major trouble and stuff. Her dad, is, he, her dad has lost all faith in her, all trust. 
he wants her to um, be in her room with the door open. He's constantly searching through her bag and everything. And then Isaac starts to tell Violet something about, oh, you know, this isn't the first time, you know, Alex has been in trouble with drugs and, and giving them to other people and stuff. And then she finds out some more information. It turns out Alex was the one who gave Jenny the pills that caused her heart attack. And nobody knew this. So, Vala is going to use this against Alex, and she blackmails Alex. See, a couple of episodes ago, Trey and McKenna decide they're going to try to find, and Henry going to decide they're going to try to find everything they can on Vala and, you know, stuff like that. So, they start doing some detective work, and some interesting stuff comes up. So McKenna's all like, you know, the best way to find out something like that is go to her place and snoop around. So she has a little slumber party at um, Violet's place. And while she's there, when Violet's in the restroom and stuff, McKenna, well, first McKenna is very shocked and surprised that when Violet ordered pizza, it's the exact same type that McKenna loved. And she asked her, how did you know my favorite pizza? And then Violet's are like, duh, I cyber stalked you. <laughs> she does it in a cliche, like in a very caval um, cavalier kind of way. But <laughs> it turns out she really is spying on them more than just their social media. More on that a little bit later. So when she's in the restroom or the bathroom, McKenna's like searching around and she finds all this strange stuff. She finds a weird old journal. She takes pictures of it. And then she sees a picture of some guy, takes a picture of him and his name. And so like, um, while they're sleeping, Violet tries to play the game on McKenna again because she never got a full reading on McKenna. So she tries again, and all she can see is McKenna and Jenny as little kids playing. And she doesn't understand why she can't get a reading on her. And she realizes Jenny is protecting her from the grave and stuff. So, back with Alex. Actually, first back with um, Trey and them. So, Trey and Henry... No, 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 wait, wait, wait. So, okay, first let me get into McKenna and Trey. So, they have a nice little bonding section. And then, next thing you know, they start kissing and making out. And as they're kissing and making out, we see in Violet's room, she's watching it. Because she has a hidden camera or spyware. She has spyware on um, McKenna's laptop. And she's able to view her through the webcam. And so, she leaves this footage up on her laptop. Now, Henry and what's his name? Trey, they break into Violet's place because Violet is at the hospital because her grandmother like fell and had some kind of like stroke or something like that. Also, oh wait, let me get into this other thing about Violet. I totally forgot. So, remember how Isaac and like um Isaac and um Violet are like getting close and stuff. So he's at her place. And as he's there, she goes to use like the bathroom. And for some reason, Isaac just decides I'm going to be nosy and snoop around your stuff. So as he's like, you know, going through her laptop and stuff, he sees the footage of McKenna and Trey making out. And he's all like, whoa, this must be coming from her room. So he calls McKenna but McKenna doesn't pick up because she's too busy making out and then so like Violet shows up and he's all like what the heck is going on man why are you spying on this girl and stuff and she comes out in just like a bath towel and stuff she's all like like she's all like and then she starts making out with him and then he's just like well, okay forget McKenna I'm gonna start making out with you and then she takes off her towel and as they're making out she grabs his hand and she puts it on that um chrysalis bump thing on her back the freakiest thing happens these huge dark veins start like consuming his entire body he hits the ground in like a corpse like state and she just like looks over him and stuff the next day as the teacher is like going in the parking lot 
he sees that there's a car parked there, somebody inside, he thinks it's a drunk student. He opens it up. It's Isaac. Isaac looks like a zombie, like half past dead and stuff. Veins all over his body, his face is pale. There's like throw up vomit coming out of his mouth. And there are dead birds all around his car. And it's like, whoa. So, and then, and then see also with Henry and, now let's get into Henry and Trey. Now Henry and Trey, when they're in the um, room of Violet, because she's at the hospital with her grandmother, they see the journal, they steal that. They see some other stuff. They see the picture of the guy that's with her, her ex-boyfriend. And then Henry sees the laptop of McKenna and Trey kissing out. He's pissed, he leaves. So now, back to Alex and Violet. Violet is fuming that the journal is gone. She goes to Alex and she's all like, I want my journal back. And, and Alex like, I have no idea what you're talking about. She's like, your friend stole it. And she's like, look, I'll release you from this curse thing, but you get my stinking book back. And not only that, but me, you, Candace, and McKenna are gonna replay the game again. <laughs> and Alice is all like, why would I do that? She's all like, you want out of this curse, don't you? So then Alice is contemplating what she should do. And she could because Violet is going to blackmail her about the pills and Jenny. So Alice goes to like, um, McKenna and stuff and tries to, um, tell her about the pills. She found just going to confess and everything. But then they find out something happened to Candace. Candace wakes up in some type of like teen therapy, like mental ward type place. And because of her nervous breakdown, she had a school. But the thing is, she doesn't even know how she got there. Apparently they sedated her at the school and sent her on over there. Weird, but whatever. Her mom's totally okay with this. And so like in the therapy session, they try to get her to go swimming in a pool. This freaks out Candace because she knows she's supposed to drown and die. So the, 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 the orderlies are like dragging her into the pool and she's kicking and screaming and then they just throw her in the pool and stuff. And then like that episode ends like that. So then we find out with Candace, we find out that, um, what is it? Um, McKenna, no, 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 uh, uh, we find out that Violet is the one who funded um well, well okay violet is the one who suggested to candace mom she should go to this therapy place and you know of course candace mom doesn't have that money so violet pays for the whole thing herself violet has a lot of money it's never really explained where she gets all this money from but it's kind of explained in the book but they don't explain it in the show so when they go to see Candace, she's fine. Like she's totally fine. She didn't drown. And Candace is acting differently now. Candace now no longer believes that Violet is a witch. She now thinks that Olivia's death was just a random act of like a car wreck and stuff. And it's like, she acting like she's brainwashed or something. And in every time the girls are all like, no, you know, Violet is evil. She does not want to believe it. And she's all like, you know, Vol, uh, Violet is um, funding this whole thing for you to be here. And she's like, no, my mom said it came from like the insurance. And it's just kind of like, I don't understand what is going on with Candace. Like, why is she so believing and trusting in um, Violet and stuff and not her two best friends? So then they leave. And then at some point in time, Alex, she's all like, you know, Hey, we should, you know, play that game again and this and that. And she just kind of like, wow, what do you want to play that game again for? And she's like, you know, maybe it could like, you know, I don't know, break the curse or something like that. So anyway, they go back inside because they want to tell like something. For some reason, they go back inside that place. I forget why. But um, Candace, oh, yes, now I remember because um, what's the face? Violet sent them a text telling them that you know how candace is supposed to drown so they're like oh crap you know she's supposed to drown so when they go back inside they find out she's supposed to do her water therapy thing so as she's about to willingly do her water therapy thing 
the orderly's left. She slips, she falls, she gets tangled in some kind of web, like um, line type thing, um, a net type thing, and she drowns. She drowns, the girls come in, the orderlies come in, they try to give her CPR. It doesn't work. Candace has now died. Now it's like two down and like two more to go. So the girls are beyond freaked out. So at some point in time, Alex almost chokes, but she doesn't. So the girls and the guys know they need answers. And the guy who's, um, so when they searching through like the journal and stuff, they see that this thing has different handwriting. And as they're going through it, they see that like tons of people have played this game for like centuries and stuff. And then they see a page with Violet's handwriting on it, but it's ripped out. So they know they need answers. So the guy who's her ex, his name is Mark Rogers and he was a friend um, of Henry's. So Trey decides he's going to go over there and like ask um, Mark's mother, you know, hey, what's going on and stuff because they need to know how Violet died. Well, not, not die, but how she's supposed to die because they don't know. And so they need also need answers and stuff. So he goes over there, talks to the mom, and the mom flips out and like, I'm not talking to you reporters no more about my son. So then that doesn't work. So then McKenna and, oh wait, before I get into that, Alex finally tells McKenna the truth about um, the pills and Jenny. McKenna's pissed. And doesn't want nothing to do with her. But then the whole thing with Candace came up and they both went and then Candace died. And so now she forgives Alex and stuff. Well, she don't forgive her, but she needs to help. So anyway, McKenna and Henry, they go over to Mark's place. And the mom is so excited to see Henry. She hasn't saw him in years. And then Mark has a little sister who's shy and kind of like hiding behind something, looking at everybody. And then as soon as they ask, how did Mark die? The mom flips out and like tells him to get out of her house. And it's just like, what is the deal with the mom? Now we find out in the second season and stuff. But uh, anyway, the sister, she runs out and she gives them like some newspaper clippings and stuff and tells them that they're all dead and soon you'll be dead too. And so the sister is willing to help out, but the sister kind of creepy and stuff. And so they go back and they look at the articles and they read a bunch of names. These are a bunch of kids that died recently and stuff. One of them is Mark. He was pushed off a bridge. Well, no, they, they believe he jumped off a bridge and stuff like that, but he was actually pushed. And so they know that Violet played this game with somebody in the past and they need to know how Violet's going to die. They need to find a way to try to break this thing. And um, so well, they 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 um so um the, the sister tells them a long time ago that like she was there when they all played the game and stuff. Now one actress that was part of that original group was Leah Lewis. She plays Georgie on Nancy Drew, <laughs> and she was in this. I forgot this is the first time I ever saw her on TV. So, to, um, so, but the girl doesn't remember how Violet is going to die. She just remembers everything that happened. So apparently this is what happened with the whole backstory. I could get in that a little bit later. Uh, where am I at now in this? Um, let's see, the crazy mama. Um, Isis in coma. Um, let me see. Oh, okay, so. What's her name? Violet still wants that journal. She tells Alex, you better do whatever you can, but you get my journal back. And so and she tells her, you leave the laptop to um, McKenna's room open. And, and Alex doesn't know why, but she does it in a way. So they're all talking in the room, talking about Violet, talking about how they're going to go off, um, look for answers in this camping site and stuff. And they're going to get like a wood cabin house or something like that. Anyway. Violet overhears it because, of course, she's spying on them. When they're there, 
Vala is sneaking around. She gets ambushed. They set her up because they knew about the camera because Henry told them and stuff. And so they have her tied up. And this is where she starts to get sassy with all of them, which pisses Alice off. They drag her and put her in a tub full of water. They turn on an electrical device and Alex is all like, give me a few minutes with it. And she makes everybody leave the room. And so, and so Alex and Viola, they're just like going at it, right? And then um, Viola is doing a good job to get underneath Alex's skin. <laughs> it pisses Alex off so much, she's just like, screw it. And she throws the electrical device in the water. It totally electrocutes Violet. And so McKenna's all like, you know, that wasn't the plan, Alex. You were just supposed to torture her and not kill her. And Alex's like, I know, I lost my temper and stuff. Then you see Vala's eyes completely open. In the next episode, Vala's like eating a sandwich and she's kind of like sassing everybody. And then she tells Alice, mm, this sandwich is so good, but it's too big for me to finish. Would you like to have some? Make sure you don't choke. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so then, you know, they start to like get the truth out of Violet. And she tells them straight up. So this is what has been going on with this whole game and the thing on her back. A couple of years back, she played the game with um, her boyfriend and a group of people. And they thought it was just a simple game and everything. Turns out, it's more than that. Now, they ask her why does she continue to keep playing the game with people putting their lives in danger. And she tells them she has no choice. Now, this is the part that don't make no sense. She says she has to continue playing the game because if she don't, People around her that she loves will die, which is why the grandma had like a stroke. That don't make no sense. But then she also has to play the game to keep herself alive because she doesn't want to die. because She's the last one standing. So she's technically like the winner of the game. And of course, that has that little thing on your back and death. But she doesn't know exactly what's going to happen once the game is truly 100% like done playing. But in a ways, it doesn't make no sense for her loved ones to, get, to die, but... And I guess that's why, and so, you know, it, it, that doesn't make no sense whatsoever. But I like the second part, but she had to keep playing so she don't die. That makes a whole lot more sense. So, she tells them the story, the tragic story, of her boyfriend, Mark. So, after her and them other people played the game, the Leah character, well, I think her name is Gabby in this, she's the one who was the, um... Kind of not necessarily the narrator type person, the one who like does the thing on the forehead and stuff like that and says the premonition, you know, what Vala did in the first episode. And so as a result, Gabby has that thing on her back. And then once all the friends start dropping like flies, they go to her and they all like, you know, what did you do to us and stuff? And she's all like, look, I'm sorry, but I had no choice. And she's like, you better leave my house or I'm calling the cops. So then they um started thinking how are they gonna survive this and better yet he's all like you know then mark is like he goes to violet's place in the middle of the night he's all like look if one of us is gonna survive this it has to be you and violet's like no you can't like kill yourself he's all like look i already tried his thing was he gets pushed off a bridge he jumped off the bridge it did not work basically like this the reason why violet is still alive the reason why Mark was still alive is because if you die any other kind of way other than what is um, premonition to you, then you won't die. So he tells Violet, you have to be the one to push me off the bridge. Violet does not want to do it. See, they're trying to give us sympathy for her, redeem her. And sadly, it worked. I started feeling bad for Violet. And like, the stuff you see her and her boyfriend go through, oh my God, it is touching. It is tragic. Like, you really feel sorry for Violet, even though she's killed all these people and stuff. And so, like, she's like, well, what about, like, Gabby? She's still alive. And he's all like, no, she's not. Gabby was supposed to die in a house fire. There's a, a reference to that in the book. I'll get into that a little bit later. And Mark is the one who set her on fire and stuff. So Gabby is gone. It's not only him and her. So... Violet does what he wants. She pushes him off the bridge. 
and everything. As a result, she now has the clitoris, uh, the, um, the chrysalis on her back and stuff, and she has to continue playing with people. So then Henry's all, he's pissed because he knows that, you know, she killed Olivia and he wants to know what's the deal with this journal and everything. She won't say. So he's like, you better tell me or I'm going to burn it. So she's like, you better not. And then he burns the whole book. And then she's pissed. Everybody's pissed at him for doing that because they think the book is going to help them solve the, how to break the curse. Violet already told them there's no way to break the curse. So in the heated discussion between the whole group, Violet sneaks off and runs off. Okay, so McKenna and, and Alex and Trey and all them, they're going to go after Violet. Henry is going to go back to Mark's mother's place and try to find out from the sister just how Violet is supposed to die. Because still to this day, nobody knows. That's why I said that he went back to her and the girl doesn't remember. But then as Henry is about to leave the place, somebody runs up towards him and that's it. We don't see Henry for the rest of this like season. Somebody ambushed his behind. And then, so, like, they find Violet on the bridge that, you know, Mark died on. Because on that bridge, it's it pretty much like this. If you're in love with somebody and you're a couple, you put, like, a lock on the um, gate chain. And then you, like, write your initials on it. And that's where she's at, remembering her good time she had with Mark. And so they're all like, look, we need to work together to break this. And she's like, all right, fine. We have to play the game again. Um... I have to find out like you know how you're supposed to like die and and jenny somehow the key and blah 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 stuff like that so then she's all like well how are they supposed to play again two of their friends are dead she's like all they just need is like an object of there so they get the object and they since then jenny is the key they have to go where jenny's at she's in the mausoleum and um ashes in the urn so trey's not there trey's doing like something else i forget what uh, oh, he's going to go look for Henry because Henry hasn't like called in and stuff. So he goes back to that that house and nobody's there and, and, and Henry's car is there. And, you know, and he doesn't know where Henry's at. So at the mausoleum, they have like the ashes of urns. They have the objects and they play the game again. But they only uh, read McKenna. This time she's able to get a clear vision. And as she's reading her, we see McKenna is kind of going in this dreamlike state. She sees Jenny in the room and Jenny is looking pretty pissy and stuff. And as she's reading the premonition, she's like, I know, I know now how she's supposed to die. And then she just kept reading her premonition. Alice is like, what are you doing? Why are you still playing the game? You should stop now since you know how she's going to die. But Violet will not let up. And for some reason, Alice kind of just like lets her do this. Oh, by the way, with Alex. Since she's about to choke, she hasn't eaten anything about two or three days. She hasn't eaten anything. She hasn't drunk anything. So she's looking kind of like corpsey right now. And so like, um, well, she looks sick. That's what I mean. It's like she's pale, um, bags under her eyes, stuff like that. So the, this is how McKenna's supposed to die. She wants to be with Jenny. She, um, she does not want to leave Jenny. So somehow... It's a weird premonition. So as she's in that room, in that little, um, like, other realm state, she doesn't want to leave Jenny's side. And Jenny kind of grabs onto her arm and stuff like that. But um, Jenny does end up, like, saving her and stuff. And so, but what breaks... And so, like, it's really creepy and eerie when Violet reads this premonition because she's keeping her eyes closed and she has this intense look on her face and it's like she's struggling. And then you start seeing McKenna body raised and you start hearing Violet constantly saying, lies the feather, stiff as a board, lies the feather, stiff as a board, lies the feather, stiff as a board, like really fast and everything. And it's freaking Alex out because Alex didn't have her eyes open last time when they levitate off the ground. And so she knocks, um violet down to the ground which breaks the um premonition and then mckenna um she's not able to wake up she's still like out of it and stuff so violet's all like Vi this is when violet turns the tables on them so she locks um what's her name alex in a room and she puts mckenna in like um a bag like a body bag type thing 
and then she puts her in like one of them little mausoleum tomb type thing because with McKenna wanting to die and everything she's supposed to suffocate like that's how she dies and wants to be with Jenny and stuff so if she suffocates in the bag then you know she'll die but here's the thing in the book why don't y'all get back to that a little later okay so anyway Trey goes to McKenna's mom's place and it's all like, you know, I can't find the girls. Do you still have that app that can like track their phone? Do people still use that track my cell phone app? I don't never hear nobody using that no more. Is it? I, I don't know. So anyway, they track it to the mausoleum. They rescue Alex. They rescue McKenna. And then as soon as they do all that, both girls are okay. And as Violet is running, the cops got called and they arrest Violet and everything. And Violet like looks on her back. The chrysalis is now gone. The spell has been broken. All girls are like okay and stuff, you know. And so like you know, five a whole month has passed since then, and everything's okay. Trey and McKenna are together now. Back at the cavern, when they when they when Henry burnt the book, Trey went and got the ashes out, and then he found the key within the book. They don't know what this key is for. So McKenna decides she's going to go visit Violet at the little prison thing. And she asks, um, well, you know, Violet's trying to be all nice. Like, maybe we can be friends now. <laughs> Stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I totally forgot. Speaking of which, when she was tied up and almost got electrocuted by them, she laid out some hard truths to, like, Alex and McKenna, telling them that, like, Cause they blamed her for all the deaths and talking about we tried to be your friend. She's all like, y'all didn't try to be my friend. Y'all felt sorry for me. Like that prank in the first episode that Olivia pulled, which was a mistake. You know, she tells them straight up, you only did that because you pitied me and everything. And they couldn't say nothing because they knew it was the truth. And then she tells them straight up, you know, this isn't the first time we all met. So there was like a flashback scene. And like in that flashback, this is when Jenny was still alive. Henry was playing like against Mark in like a comp uh, tennis competition and the girls are all there and they're having fun and then they see Violet and McKenna and um, McKenna and Violet, they introduce each other and they're just having a good old time, you know what I'm saying? But after that interaction, they never tried to be friends with her and stuff. And she's all like, you know, y'all could have been friends with me, but y'all never tried until y'all felt sorry. So anyway, with the key thing, McKenna asks her straight up, yo, what this thing about? She's all like, oh, that's just mine. I'll take it. She's like, nah, I'm going to hold on to this and everything. And then something, they say something to each other. McKenna's a little freaked out and she leaves. Then McKenna's back is in pain. She pulls up her shirt and there is the chrysalis on McKenna's back now. And McKenna's like, oh, crap. Like, you know, what happened? I don't know how it jumped to her because the only person who's supposed to have it is the person left alive. And three of the girls are now still alive, so I don't know how it jumped to her. But a whole lot of interesting stuff does happen in the second season. I can't wait to get into that. But now let's get into like the book. The book is a bit different from that of the show. The show took a lot of liberties here and there. But they did try to keep close to the source material. Okay, differences is that McKenna was the new girl in school um, along with Violet. See, what happened was McKenna came from this small town. And the small town, that's where Jenny died. Jenny died from a house fire, not um, a pill overdose. I guess they couldn't have the money to do that, so they just didn't do it. And plus, they probably wanted to tie it in closer to Alex and stuff. Speaking of Alex, Alex's name in the book isn't Alex, it's Misha. I guess they decided to change it because since Alex is like the lesbian and stuff, they want to give her a general, uh, a gender neutral type name that can go both for male and female. Because that's how most time in modern day television is now when there's like a lesbian or LGBT type female character, they'll give that person like a male name. And so they changed it to Alex and stuff. And so McKenna was a new girl at school and she befriends the clique and the clique is Candace, Olivia and Misha slash Alex in the book on um, Alex on the show. 
And in the book, Olivia is the queen bee. She is the mean rich girl, which is why, you know, they, they had a little of that in that in the show, but she's mostly nice in the show. And so like the whole Candace and Olivia thing, Olivia, like I said, she's white in the book with blonde hair and feels like she's in um, Olivia's shadow. Now they do play the game with Violet in the book. Isaac is not dating Olivia in the book, and, but Henry and McKenna are a thing. And McKenna doesn't know Trey cause she didn't grow up with him in the book, but she meets him and he's cute. And she has like, you know, flirtation with him and stuff. Now, Candace drowning is supposed to happen in the ocean in Hawaii and stuff. And they didn't do that for the show. Cause I guess they couldn't go to a location on a beach and it was more compelling. It was, it, trust me, it was more shocking and compelling to see her in that facility and drowning in the pool than it would be in a big old ocean and stuff. Um, let's see what else is different. Um, oh, you die in the order in which your premonition was read. So Misha, Alex, she is, um, supposed to be next after Candace and stuff. Now, with Violet and Olivia, that's the biggest difference. They pretty much gave the Olivia stuff to the Candace character in the show. See, after Violet um, premonition Olivia and she dies, she starts to take Olivia's life. She starts to take her popularity from her, the student body president thing, um, her friends, um, her, her, her stature as being Miss Popular and everything. This does not happen in the show, kind of. Like, it happens a little. Like, she takes some stuff away from Candace, but she doesn't take the popularity. So, Violet's the new queen bee. And that's where she gets, like, all this money from and stuff from all the people that, like, die and kill. Violet is very much evil <laughs> in the book and stuff. And it's to the point where, you know, McKenna and Nisha, they're, they're like, you know, have to, like, stop her and stuff. And so like they start using things like protection spells and it's very much more witchy-ish type in the other books. And, but with the other books, it, you know, like I said, like Misha does survive in the first book, but she does not survive in the second and stuff. She dies somewhere towards the end because Violet is still alive, wreaking havoc and everything like that. Um... And that's pretty much all I know from what I was able to read from like the synopsis and stuff of like the book. But yeah, it's like, it's different. It's different in a kind of like a cool way. Sometimes it's not. Um, but yeah, this is like, like I said before, this is like a very, very, very good show. And like... I suggest you check it out. It's cool. It's not that much horror in this, but when there is supernatural stuff, it's so eerie and creepy. I wish they would have put more of the horror supernatural stuff in there, but you know, they didn't, but hey, you know, that's just how like life is sometimes, you know? Now wasn't that spooky? All right, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs> uh, 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 uh.